Hey fellow scrappers, it's Mike the Scrapping Guy here again and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a kind of retro comic book effect with uh, some of your layouts and um, uh, with digital scrapbooking you don't necessarily have to have all of the cutesy embellishments and the kind of like fancy um, kind of photos and backgrounds and things like that. Uh, sometimes uh, you can get a little bit crazy and, and a little comical and as you can see in this layout I did here there was a couple of photos that I had from our vacation we took this year and rather than just kind of making a, a normal scrapbook that you would usually see I turned it into a, a comic book type of a look added some uh, balloons with some verbiage and things and it came out kind of nice so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to kind of take this concept and I'm going to create a panel and I'm going to give it that, like I said, that retro comic book effect, which kind of has, if you ever looked at an old comic book, you can actually see the little dots, um, halftone dots that they have in there. And we can actually do that in Photoshop Element 7, or actually kind of make it look like uh, like those those dots from the halftone um, screens. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we go ahead and minimize that, and I'm going to bring up the photo that I'm going to use. And we get the whole thing in here so we can see what we're working on. There we go. And the first thing I need to do is I'm going to um, add some contrast to this photo. You can see it's kind of, it's a nice photo, but it, it's uh, kind of bland. There's really no kind of uh, brightness or, or darkness to it. It's kind of like gray, uh, grayish over it. So I'm going to go up to Enhance and Adjust Lighting and go to my Levels. And what I'm going to do is on the left slider, I'm going to bring that a little bit to the right to darken up some of the dark areas. Okay, like so. And on the right, I'm going to take the lighter colors. I'm going to brighten them up a little bit. And this is all going to be adjusted based on the particular photo that you're working on. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see we now have more of a contrasty, kind of a pop-out kind of a... Of a photo here instead of the normal kind of flat photo that we were looking at before and this will actually enhance the pantone um, kind of effects that were uh, or the halftone I'm sorry the halftone effects that we're going to be looking at later so with that uh, set up that way I'm going to go back up and go to filter and hit artistic and go to film grain and what that's going to do is it's going to add a little bit of graininess to the photo and I'm going to, this is once again you can kind of choose and you can kind of experiment with your photos and you know change things around but I'm going to keep the grain a little bit small and keep it around 2. Highlight area I'm going to keep as 0 and the intensity I'm going to have as 10. So go ahead and hit OK there. You can see we kind of have a little bit of a different look now with the film grain on there. If I hit Control Z you can see the before and go and redo it and there we go. So we now have the film grain set up. Whoops, just wanted to move a little bit. Actually, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I want to go and go over to my layers uh, window. And I'm just going to take that layer and I'm going to drag it up to the new layer little icon there. And you can see that it did add a layer on top of it. And I'm going to call this layer, let me kind of double click it, just call this layer halftone because that's the layer that we're going to be putting the halftone effect on. So now we have these two layers selected. I'm going to go back up to filter and I'm going to go to pixelate and choose the color halftone effect and once again you can kind of uh, adjust depending on the resolution of your photo but I'm just going to keep it set at 4 which is lower. The default is actually 8 which would be a little too much if you look here. Let me go ahead and show you eight. That's a little too much effect that I need uh, on my photo. So let me go back up there and oh, go to filter, color half tone, and change it to four. I'm going to hit OK. And you'll see the effect that we have here in a second. There we go. Let me go ahead and zoom back in again. And you'll actually see here are, are the little different, um, almost looks like the halftone print when you look at a real close uh, close up of a magazine or a uh, one of those old comic books. So we go ahead and zoom back out. And to really uh, give this effect, uh, make this effect even nicer, I'm going to come over and make sure my halftone layer is still selected. 
I'm going to change it to darken. And what that does is that brings back the contrast once again. So if we go ahead and zoom in. We can see we're really enhancing that effect. And we can uh, make out the picture a little bit better than we could before we changed that to the darken um, overlay. So it's kind of like we have the basic uh, picture or the photograph that we can use for our design. So now I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of uh, comic book elements to it. But the first thing I'm going to do, I really don't know these kids in the background, and I, re I really want to keep the focus on the two in the front. Uh, one is my daughter and the other is, is her friend. So I'm going to go over to the crop tool, and I'm just going to kind of cut around them, and I can make adjustments here. And hit the green commit button, and there we have cropped out the other kids, and I have just the two subjects that I want there, the two kids. And I'm going to come over to my shape tool, and I'm going to come up, and I've already have selected the uh, balloon characters, but if you don't have those selected, let's say you had, uh, I don't know, a bunch of them, um, different ones that are in there, we could do is come over, and it is, let's see, where was it at? Uh, talk bubbles, there it is at the very bottom. It's one called talk bubbles. And I'm going to have my daughter saying something uh, to her friend. So I'm going to click on the, uh, the kind of the verbiage kind of talk, uh, talk bubble. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to create it like so. And as you can see, the little pointy uh, part that's supposed to go up to her mouth is uh, incorrect. It's actually done by her leg. So what I could do is with that layer, I can just go up to image. There we go. Rotate. And the layer, depending on how you have it set up, I'm going to change it to horizontal. And go over and let's see, try vertical. And actually kind of backwards there. Let's try this again. Whoops. Rotate, horizontal. There we go. So you might have to mess with that a few times just to make sure you get it uh, lined up right. So we have her ready to say something. And what I'm going to do is go over to my text tool. And I'm going to make sure that the color of the text is black. And then the font that you want, I actually have a comic book font in here. Uh, you may or may not have one. You might have Comic Sans. But if you don't have a comic book font, you can easily go to Google and just do a search for um, you know, free comic book fonts and it'll bring up loads of different comics uh, kind of fonts that you can use. But I'm going to go ahead and I have one already selected. So I'm going to start typing in my words here. Here we go back. Okay, I can't believe you talked me into writing this thing. Now if you look at it, we can see that the words are kind of close together here. So what we can do is we can adjust the letting by going up to the letting selection. And we can kind of work with it. Uh, oh, actually, I've got to select it first. There we go. And we can kind of work with it. And you can see 12 is a little too small. We can try 18. And that gives a little bit more room on the uh, between the lines. So actually 18 for this particular uh, set of verbiage or, uh, actually works pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave that in there. And one other thing I want to do with this talk bubble, I want to. You, you can see that that doesn't have a kind of black outline going around it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an outline to that. So I'm going to go down to my shape layer. I'm going to right click and hit simplify it. And what that does is it turns it into a normal normal kind of graphic that I can work with. And I'm going to go up to um, Edit, Stroke Outline Selection, and let's go ahead, uh, let's choose 5 for that. Make sure the color is br uh, black. And we can either do the center, the uh, inside, center, outside. I'm going to go ahead and click outside so it doesn't create anything too close to the words. Hit OK. And if we zoom in here, we can kind of look at we now have the black outline going around the talk bubble. Go ahead and zoom back out. And one last thing I want to do is I want to add a white border going around this um, photograph. And depending on your layout, if you're uh, if you already have a layout that you're just going to go and create the individual uh, panels and then uh, put them on a separate layout like a design, then you might 
probably don't need to make a white border going around it because the the layout that you're working on the like the page that you're working on will automatically create the border for you but if that's not the case we can go ahead and create one ourselves anyway so what I'm going to do is any layer that's above the halftone or the background one I can use for the border going around so I'm just going to use the one where I had the uh, uh, speaking bubble on there and I'm just going to go over make sure my rectangular marquee tool is selected and I'm just going to draw all the way outside the, um, the photograph to make sure it is uh, completely selected and you can see that there's the marching ants going around there now so I can go up to edit stroke outline selection and this time I want it to be thicker so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose 17 and the color I'm going to make sure is white and I want the inside to be the location now because if I do um, the outside it's not going to give me anything because there is no I mean the, we're actually at the edge of the image so um, doing outside would give me nothing center would basically cut that size in half so I'm going to go and just uh, go ahead and choose inside hit OK and there we have it we have our comic book panel of one of our vacation photos that I can now use in a um, a layout that I'd be working on and I'd obviously do this with all the photos that I would want to put in that particular comic book layout and that's a real easy way to do it so let me go ahead and zoom back in again so you can see it kinda of gives you that retro kind of uh, halftone uh, look to it that you would see in those old comic books and it's a pretty neat effect and go ahead and give it a try